Time to discuss the good news about Florida State football. You are Locked On Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back into Locked On Seminoles. My name is Brian Smith, and thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. Truly appreciate you stopping in to talk some Knowles football with me. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. All right, finally, Florida State gets its first win against Cal, fourteen to nine. You're one and three. Obviously, it's not the season that you want, but Florida State is in a much better place than what it's been in for a long time. And to that point, there's a different goal now. Obviously, you're not going to the national championship this year, but first things first. Myself and most people didn't think this team was going to a bowl. That's as of this past week. But then again, I didn't think the defense would take it to this level. I didn't think the offensive line would be much better. I didn't think Lawrence Tofili would even have remotely the opportunities that he did to run the football. And I didn't think DJ would make a couple of money throws that, quite honestly, make it a much different game. Like the throw to Ja'Kai Douglas, you're not going to see a better pass this season. So Florida State's goals have changed. Some of the players have stepped up, and we're going to go through some of those. And then to end the show, we're going to talk about a little bit of matchups, just the beginning of the preview for Florida State's first true road game against SMU, and it's going to build off this first part. But let's let's talk about what the objective is for the season now. From my perspective, it's to get to at least six wins and go to a bowl game. It's achievable. The schedule is not super hard, but not super easy either. You're going to have to continue to improve. And after what we saw in the first three weeks, needless to say, Florida State is a far better team than it was in week one against Georgia Tech or even week two or week three. So that's the objective in my perspective. You have a different thought, comment on the YouTube page or send a message on at Locked On Seminoles at LO underscore Seminoles on X, whatever it may be. I'm curious to see what you have to say. I think it's going to be a rather interesting next couple of weeks because if they can get to 500, anything's possible. So between now and the end of the eighth game, let's see if Florida State can be at least four and four. Is that likely? I don't know. I think the Clemson game is the least likely game to win before they get into that stretch. I think, man, I'm not sure which game Miami, Miami might be the eighth game. I can't remember, but Clemson and Miami are the two most difficult games they have left. But there's nobody else that I sit there and say, man, that's 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 a team that has everything rolling for it and it's just going good. So let's see where Florida State can get. So here are a few of the things that I personally liked about the game and some of the players that not only stepped up, but some of these guys like kind of came out of the blue. Uh, for instance, Jalen Early, he played tackle again. And we didn't know much about him. First game, he wasn't quite ready. Second game, he was much better. And that was against Cal. He's pretty active when he gets in space and moves on a counter play or he goes up to the second level and takes on a linebacker. As I mentioned, Florida State's run game improved. And when you have one of your tackles out, that's, you know, that's tough. Florida State has adapted. He's a kid who played at Duncanville High School, arguably the best public school high school football program in the country. It's in the Dallas area. They are dominant in the Lone Star State, so he's used to being around winning. He's a redshirt sophomore, if I remember correctly. Big guy, but again, he can move. You have to have development consistently across the board, no matter if it's a portal kid, a juco kid, or a high school player. Seeing a young lineman like this get his shot and, quite honestly, improve quite a bit is a good sign. He had the highest grade, I think, if I remember correctly, on PFF for the Florida State offensive line against Cal. And this is a guy that's barely played. So that's a really good sign. Also, Lawrence Tofili off the point regarding Jalen Early in the offensive line, 17 carries, 80 yards. Those are the stats. And most importantly, he hit pay dirt and scored. With that, there's something else to note. He set a tone. He believed in the offensive line. And the reason I say that, you can tell by how hard he was running. If he thought he was going to get stoned over and over again, he wouldn't have been running like that. He'd have been looking to make moves and get to the perimeter. He hit his hole, took off, made contact, fought forward for extra yards when there was nothing else there. I thought Florida State's offensive line gave him some good opportunities. 
but that's a good start. I know Keziah and some of these other guys are banged up in the, in the backfield. Cam Davis also stepped up, even though he didn't have quite as many opportunities when he ran the ball. He was a powerful force at 25 yards rushing, and that added to it. And he's a guy I think has an enormous future at Florida State University. Cam is about five foot 10, 215 to 225 pounds. He ranges in that area. He's a load. He is a traditional downhill, dot the eye power running back, but he's got speed. He can hit about 22 miles per hour. And that's not a guy you want to be in front of. There were a couple of plays last year, his senior year of high school, before he got banged up, where he hit kids so hard it looked like a gnat hitting a Mack truck. So this is a nice one two punch, even if they do have guys banged up. I'm also curious to see what Singleton does. That's another player that's got a lot of speed and elusiveness. So Florida State's run game overall is headed in a good direction. Nice to get Darius Washington back as well. Moving on to the passing game. I, I went over and earlier today I did it. They still have a lot of problems at quarterback. I'm not going to get into that in this pod. But let's also give DJ credit when it is due. The pass to DJ, to uh, excuse me, to Ja'Kai Douglas was fantastic. And Ja'Kai for the game. These are pretty impressive stats. Four catches, 86 yards, scored the touchdown. So that's 21 and a half yards per, per reception, and he scores the game winner. This is a guy that's supposed to be just a slot receiver, an extra guy or whatever. He's taken a step forward. He might be their best receiver, and quite frankly, he might be the guy that teams now have to kind of scheme against. Hopefully that will allow Hakeem Williams, who's now back in the rotation, along with Malik Benson, to kind of spread it out. And if they can get Morlock or anybody else consistently going at tight end, all of a sudden Florida State's passing game would be much, much better. The inconsistencies are still there. I'm not taking away from that. They have a long way to go. But at least they hit some clutch plays. That's important. The next step for me is to see Florida State hit more of those in the middle of the field. They did a good job on the outskirts again, but they've got to be able to threaten teams in the middle of the field. They've got the personnel to do it. Now we need to see the execution. Talking about the secondary is also something else that's interesting. We talked about all offseason going into fall camp. Yeah, you lost a couple of good players, but they've recruited well there. And they've also gotten some guys into the lineup that came from other programs that were talented. Let's see how it kind of falls through and everything works itself out. You never know. Some guys that you think are going to start won't and vice versa. And that's pretty much what's happened. Take, for instance, Edwin Joseph, South Florida kid. He played at Chaminade Madonna. He gets a pick. He also had a couple of nice tackles. You had some other players from the state of Florida they've recruited that are sophomores, like Conrad Hussey's had some good, good moments. Um, talking about uh, for Quindarius Jones, by the way, the kid from Mississippi. He was only offered by Florida State. He had, for whatever reason, the target on his back, and he thwarted Cal over and over again. They stayed away from Azariah. I get it. He's an NFL player. Quindarius was really good. He might have been their best pure cover guy. And Cal's quarterback, let's give him a, a nod. He threw for 300 yards. He's good. He doesn't have dominant receivers, but they catch everything. If you're not locking them down, and I mean truly locking them down, they're going to hit on a play. Quindarius was as good a DB as there was on the field. And Florida State's got multiple NFL players in their secondary from a skill standpoint. So I'm really happy about that. Uh, Kirkland. He's another guy that's really good that's a younger player. He's a sophomore. I think Florida State's secondary is on the rise. And I was kind of curious to see how they would perform. SMU's the next team, and they're going to throw it more. We'll talk more about them as the week went on. Goes on, excuse me. But Cal, their offense is a pain to defend, a lot of shifts, a lot of motions. They run a ton of rub routes. And after the game that Florida State played the week before against Memphis, another team that does a lot of similar stuff that's annoying to defend, Florida State adjusted. They did a better job with communication, and that allowed for one single thing to happen that most teams struggle with, consistency. Florida State went from a really inconsistent secondary slash linebacker group with passing guys off, et cetera, to at least being adequate. I think by the end of this season, with as much speed and length as they have, you're going to see this being one of the better secondaries in the country. I'm surprised I'm saying that in one week. The jump was, was there. But uh, now you're going to have a SMU team that's got a lot of speed, too. So you're going to be challenged again. So that's going to be fun. Finally here, the big thing that I, I knew they would play better against SMU, but I didn't expect them to dominate the way they did against Cal. The defensive front seven, 
and some of the blitzes through so the DBs get some credit with the blitz package and just the pass rush in general. Tremendous. Florida State had 12 tackles for a loss, seven sacks, and quite honestly, one very long ice bath for Fernando Mendoza, quarterback who's from, ironically, Columbus High School down in Miami. This is a young man that's very talented, but if you hadn't gotten to him as much as you did, how many yards would he have thrown for? Some of those throws he made, there's nothing for State could do about it. They were NFL throws. So the pass rush gets home or else he throws for 4 four fifty. He was on fire. They had to get to him to make him throw it away because they do a good job of scheming things up. Florida State deserves credit for that, and they're going to get it right here. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the players and a little bit of the matchup with SMU, some of my original thoughts, and then we'll get into stats with the SMU. This is going to be a fun matchup this next weekend in Dallas. Florida State makes its first road trip in the ACC, and it will be SMU's first ACC game in the league. All right, NFL fans, you can get going with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. When you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view all the play-by-play and all these different things that you need to see to make your bets right there on the, on the FanDuel app. You can get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Matchups. That's what football really comes down to more often than not. Matchups. Quarterback against a secondary that likes to play man defense. Well, that may work out for one or the other. It just depends on the players in question. Well, in this game, it's going to be interesting because SMU plays a lot of zone. Florida State has some big receivers. They're going to probably throw some jump balls too, at least I think. But they're also going to have to matriculate the ball down the field. That's one of the first things I noted when I watched SMU from their highlights against TCU, they, they give up some plays. They jump on some play action, some different things. A flea flicker caught them. You can beat their secondary if you're patient. TCU's defense is horrendous, and they were shredded by SMU, but their offense did a nice job. They scored over 40 points. I think that there's a chance that Florida State could actually have a pretty good game offensively. Can't believe I'm saying that, but I think they got a chance to score. Be careful now. 30 points possibly against SMU. Why? Passing game's improved. Offensive line's getting a little healthier. And the run game's definitely better than it was. Still going to need what I talked about earlier in the show to happen for this to transpire. And that is the middle of the field. That's something I'm curious about. You're going to see some different looks from TCU, some cover two, some cover four, et cetera. Basic defense. But they do jump things and get a little aggressive sometimes and get out of position. Florida State speed and their size at wide receiver is something to watch. Even when a player is not quote unquote wide open, it may be okay to let it fly because the receivers have some size. For instance, I mean, Malik Benson could run by guys anyway, but he's six foot, six foot one. Against a few of the corners and DBs, he might be able to outjump somebody or definitely again run by them. I'm curious to see Hakeem. They haven't hit him on a big shot down the field yet. He's healthy again. It's about time to get him a chance down the field. And then any of the younger guys that want to get in the mix, I'd be curious to see if Florida State tries to use one of them. Elijah Moore or somebody like that, maybe they get a chance to play. But the receiver corpse overall, you're talking about a guy, really any of the spots can make a play. They they played at least a little bit better. Uh, There weren't a bunch of drops in the game against Kyle. Maybe it's Kentron. Maybe it's uh, Deuce Spain. I don't know. Somebody else that got some guys with size. I think they're going to throw some jump balls down the field. Last point on this. And it's it's just time for him to really start playing what he's up to in terms of a talent level. That's Kyle Morlock. He cannot drop any more of these easy passes again. I beat up on him in the earlier podcast on Sunday, talking about that pass. It was a really nice throw by DJ Uwe Ungole. You can't miss that. You have to catch that ball. It changes the game. It changes momentum if you make that play. They've got to have those. So I think Florida State can make some hay in the passing game against SMU just based on the film. As for the run game, SMU's okay up front as a defense. I don't think they're great. SMU is not a team that's going to dominate you with just physical, hold you up, beat you up, and then guys run by. They're not like Georgia. They're the opposite of what Georgia is. Georgia plays a layered defense. 
They use mass up front, just huge human beings. SMU is different. They try to use speed, get around the edge, and play downhill that way. It's kind of a risky defense, in my opinion, up front. And again, misdirection, play action, flea flickers, reverses. You can catch them in some pretty bad spots. Norvell and the offense have shown since he's been in Tallahassee, they will use motions and shifts to get an advantage on an edge to begin with. They may hit a few more plays in the run game that will than that way than they will in the past, which is fine. But either way, they have a chance for chunk yardage plays. Look for SMU to be out of position. Florida State now has to execute and make sure they don't miss on those plays. If a guy's open, obviously DJ's got to hit it, but the running back has to make good choices too. This is an opportunity for Florida State's offense to truly get on track. They're going to need to score too. I'll get into the offense here in just a moment for SMU, but they got some speed on offense. I mean, they, they're going to score. I know Florida State's defensive line in their front seven is playing good. The secondary certainly had its moments despite giving up quite a few yards against Cal. But SMU's got some playmakers. They need to be sure to score a like, minimum here. They need to put the ball in the end zone four times against SMU. That's kind of like – the bottom end for what I think they need to do to score and win. But SMU is also a team that I believe is capable. If you give them an early lead, again, it's first ACC game for them. Their crowd's into it. They got a pretty pretty healthy fan base. That can go either direction. That first quarter, Florida State needs a big drive or maybe even a big play. Second play from scrimmage, maybe they go play action and they hit somebody like Kentron on a deep post. I, I don't know, but they need to hit something like that and take advantage to open up the run game. That is the exact problem that Florida State faced against Cal. First quarter, they ran it down their throat. But then when they brought those safeties up, Florida State didn't have an answer. The reason, again, the middle of the field. There must be a much better plan and even more importantly, execution. They tried a few times. They missed on the bomb to Benson. The pass to Morlock was dropped. There were a few other plays, even on the play to Douglas. I just saw this on X. The touchdown down the left sideline to him, there was an angle from the side that Douglas lined up on. Across the field, Tofili ran a wheel route. Literally nobody covered him. And it happened multiple times during the game, and DJ never looked his way. That's A, a fault on DJ, and B, the booth for Florida State failed. You have to tell him, you must wait for this, because if they do this again, you just don't overthrow him. He could have walked into the end zone. The DB and the uh, outside linebacker ran into each other. They took each other out. Those are the kinds of plays, I mean, again, the throw Douglas, great, but those are the kinds of plays you have to hit and you can't miss in a road game. Will Florida State execute at that level? I don't know. I have a lot more optimism because Florida State was finally clutch in the fourth quarter. It didn't look good there for a minute. They get a break. Cal misses the field goal. Florida State's defense just keeps hanging in there and keeps giving Mendoza all kinds of trouble with the pass rush, and they held on. Now you have a little momentum, but can you seize it? It's going to take even better execution on offense to help the D in this game because you're not winning with 14 points at SMU. That's zero chance of that. You need to score three, probably four touchdowns to beat them. They've got a pretty good offense. And that's what we're going to talk about next here at Locked On Seminoles. Give a little snippet for what we're going to talk about the rest of the week with SMU. I'll break down a little more film and discuss them a little bit more specifically, but I do want to give an idea for Florida State fans what SMU brings. That's next on Locked on Seminoles. Have you downloaded the Game Time app yet? Game Time is an app that allows you to get into all kinds of different events, music, plays, concerts, football games, basketball games, golf, whatever it is that you're into. There are a couple of different things that I like about it personally. For one, earlier today, I was looking at the app, checking out prices for Florida State versus Clemson. There are seats available in a lot of different locations, and the prices range all over the place, but there's plenty of seats available. Whatever it is you're looking for, you have a chance to get it. A couple of points about it. Number one, you click on a seat, you get a view of the stadium itself. Doe Campbell or wherever Florida State's playing, if you wanted to look up the SMU game, you want to go check it out in Dallas. By the way, Dallas is one of my favorite cities to visit. It's a great time. There's all kinds of things you could do based on the game time app in that city. You could go see all kinds of different stuff there. And again, click on the seat. You get a view of the field. Finally, if you turn on the app you or turn on the feature in the app, you can set it up where you have all-inclusive pricing on game time as well. That's pretty convenient. I hate going into apps where you don't get to find out the price. So make sure you turn that on and check it out. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app. 
create an account and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game time. So SMU has a pretty explosive offense, but they have a unique scenario here that's twofold. One, their schedule, minus the game they played against BYU in week three, they lost a close game 15 to 18, has been really, really underwhelming. Uh, no offense, but Houston Christian is not winning any national titles. That's one of the teams they played and smoked. Great. Good for them. But they do have explosive players. I haven't really broken down and looked at their film in terms of watching their linemen yet. But I watched their skill players. They got some speed. They have some guys with experience. Brayshard Smith's a guy that was at Miami. You remember him. He transferred to SMU. Brett Lashley, who was the OC at Miami at one point, is now the head coach for the SMU Mustangs. They really throw it around very, very high tempo when they want to be. But I don't think that's necessarily going to be the case against Florida State because they changed quarterbacks. This is wild to me. I thought Preston Stone was pretty good. He got replaced. I mean – it is what it is, but Kevin Jennings, a kid that's another local quarterback, he played at uh, Dallas South Oak Cliff, if I remember right. This is a kid that can move. If you do not break down, this is another, I'm going to say this a million times this week. Think of Thomas Castellanos, Haynes King. This is another really annoying quarterback to play. He is the polar opposite, polar opposite of what they've seen the last two weeks. Guys that are cerebral. Make good checks. Don't put the ball in harm's way. Experienced guys, etc. This is a quarterback that's played a little bit, but not a lot. It's got like four games experience. Actually, behind center is the main guy. Again, the name is Kevin Jennings. Six foot, 190 pounds, something like that. He could play receiver. He's athletic, but he's also got a pretty strong arm. He can roll right and throw it on a dime and hit a guy on a comeback right by the pylon and make you look bad. So if you're looking for a guy to be easy to get to the ground, kind of like Mendoza in terms of, you know, he's not going to move a whole lot. This is not the game. Florida State is going to have to earn its sacks. And more importantly, it's not necessarily getting the sacks against him, but it's important. If you keep a guy, he's maybe six foot. Uh, six foot's probably generous. If you keep him in the pocket, Florida State's got several linemen that are over 6'2". This is a game where you have a chance to get a deflection and get a pick six. This is the kind of game where you got a chance – to knock several passes down and destroy drives based on keeping him in the pocket. If he's outside the pocket, you're going to knock him down. Those one or two plays like that in a football game often determine a winner when the game's probably going to be close, and the SMU Florida State game should be close. Should be. Uh, I think it'll be one of the better games in college football this next weekend, to be honest with you. I think it has a chance to be a game in the 70s in terms of total points. It, it wouldn't surprise me because I don't think either defense is going to completely stop the other one because both quarterbacks have some ability to throw the ball down the field. I think both teams will also have the chance to score on defense. SMU did it a couple of times against TCU. So there's plenty of speed on the field, a lot of big plays. So can you generate one or two more? The biggest key for Florida State, though, again, against Jennings, keep him in the pocket. Make him try to see over the line. Don't give him an easy throwing lane by letting him escape up the pocket then moving right or left underneath the defensive end that went past him. See that all the time, even in pro football, must stay in your rushing lanes. Florida State has stunk at this the last two years. They have. They've stunk. Seven sacks last week, but that's not against a mobile quarterback. And I can guarantee you SMU's line is better than Cal's. Cal's offensive line and pass protection left a lot to be desired. Florida State took advantage, as they should, but they're not going to be as fortunate this week. So here are a few of the things to note about him when he's not throwing the ball. Sacks count against these stats, but here are Jennings as a runner. These are the numbers. 25 carries, 137 yards, five and a half yards per carry, and a touchdown. He is a threat. If he gets outside the pocket, yes, he can absolutely throw the football, and he will look to do so. But Jennings is also a young man that, you know what? I've only got one guy to beat. Good luck. You better not give him a two-way go and, like, line up right down the middle of him. He will shake you to death and make you miss you got to make him go right or left, get on one side of him or another, make him go one direction. Get help, center him back to the middle of the field, because if he gets outside of you and it's just him in the sideline, he'll stay in bounds and punch it. He will score. That's number one. Number two, Brayshard Smith, the guy I mentioned a few minutes ago, the running back. He is a dude. 
I didn't think he was that good at Miami, but he is, I mean, I know their competition has been great, but watching him on film, he is just lightning. Um, he's gotten even faster than he was at Miami. He must be pretty healthy right now. 53 carries, 380 yards, 7.2 yards per tote, and six touchdowns this year. That's a lot of speed on the outside. They'll throw the football to him. They'll get him the ball on screens. They'll do anything they can. So he's the key to the game. Florida State must stop the interior rushing attack. They run basic plays with him inside zone, outside zone, and he picks the hole. If you get outside of your gap fit, he'll cut it back and find it, and he'll score. He can beat guys to the angle, even if they've got a two-yard edge on him. He has that kind of speed. So Brayshard is a key. And then if the last name doesn't mean anything to you, you're probably not as old as me, but a player by the name of R.J. Maryland is a flex tight end for SMU that's really good. Remember Russell Maryland that played at Miami, first pick in the draft, 1990 for the Dallas Cowboys at the University of Miami? That's his kid. He's the big tight end for the SMU Mustangs. So far this year, 13 catches, 191 yards, 14.7 yards per catch, and a touchdown. He is a unique matchup. I have no idea what Florida State's going to do to try to take him away, but he's a guy that might catch a screen. They might throw a jump ball to him in the back of the end zone, drag route, anything. He is a very different kind of player. He's in the 235-pound range, so he's just really a big receiver. That's an interesting matchup because – Guys like this, there is no pure matchup one-on-one in man-to-man coverage like Florida State wants to run most of the time. What does Florida State do? Because if he is doing well, that takes away from your ability to stuff the run, bring an extra defender into the box, or you just live with him killing you in one-on-one if you can't find a matchup. And again, I don't know how that's going to work out. It could be the most fascinating matchup of the SMU Florida State game overall, but that's a player to watch. Again, R.J. Maryland, 13 catches, 191 yards, 14.7 per reception, and one touchdown so far this year. And as a extra note, what a shout-out to the special teams guys. Florida State special teams this year have been fantastic. Master Mono, Fitz, tremendous. Well, it just so happens that SMU has a kicker that's tremendous too. He's made eight of his last nine. He had a 49-yarder and a 51-yarder, I believe it was, in this past game against TCU, and that young man's name, to give him all the credit deserved, is Colin Rogers. Again, he's eight of his last nine to huge leg. He's consistent. That's a kid that you need to keep <laughs> away, way back. I mean, he's, he can knock it like the 51-yarder made it with distance. He's got a big leg. So this could be an interesting game in terms of play calls when you get down into that 35-yard line area. A lot of guys go for it on fourth and four, fourth and five. SMU might just kick the field goal because he's good enough. So that's something to think about, especially if the game goes down to the wire in the fourth quarter or goes into overtime. We're going to talk more about SMU this week as we move forward. Look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. But again, thank you for stopping in and making Locked On Seminoles your first listen each and every day. I truly appreciate it. Hit that like button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe to this podcast. I truly appreciate you doing that. And above all else, comment. I'm curious what you think about Florida State's win over Cal. Is this a momentum builder or is this just an aberration? What do you see? I think Florida State kind of earned that one. They had some clutch moments, which they hadn't had in the first three games. That's for sure. They were as non-clutch as it gets. They turned it around. Can they do that again? But this time on the road in Dallas against SMU for the Mustangs' first ACC game. That's what we're going to talk about for most of the rest of the week here at Locked on Seminoles. Everybody have a great day. Truly appreciate it. I'll see you on Tuesday.